Hello and welcome everybody to game two of OGS and Snare versus Liquid Tyler. My name is Glitch and uh, this is going to be a TVP on Zelnaga Caverns. In game one we saw uh, some very nice early aggression from Liquid Tyler. It was able to take a very early quick lead, uh, got a lot of early SCV kills off of OGS and Snare and uh, managed to macro up quite a big force but OGS and Snare uh, managing to macro up quite a force was able to have some nice unit control and snipe off uh, all of Liquid Tyler's Colossi, leaving all the rest of his gateway units to just be decimated by a pretty large Marauder force. Um, so uh, very well played there by Ensnare, coming back from a pretty bad uh, lead from Liquid Tyler early on and uh, able to take game one. This is now going to be game two, as I said, of uh, Ensnare versus Tyler, and uh, we're going to see if Tyler can come back from this and see if we can go on to a game three. Uh, now, OGS and Snare spawning as the Red Terran in the bottom left corner so far is just going for a, a pretty standard build. Expect a Rax here soon. He didn't go for a very early aggressive style of play in game one. We saw uh, a we saw that no gas style of uh, play and uh, early expand from Ensnare where he uh, got that command center pretty early uh, while he just grabbed a few barracks and uh, got that early expansion up and going though it was denied for quite a while from uh, landing and this time uh, looks like Ensnare is going to be going for a little bit different of a build. He has now thrown down his refinery right after his barracks so maybe we might even see uh, some quick tech here. Might see a quick factory or maybe just a quick stim. Spawning in the top right corner is the blue Protoss, we have Liquid Tyler, who is now just macroing up a storm, has thrown down that gateway, has now thrown down that gas, this is a pretty standard uh, Protoss build, it is uh, pretty standard, I wouldn't be surprised to see a, a cybernetics core come down next, followed by another uh, Vespine Geyser. For some reason there isn't a whole lot of variation in Protoss builds, I never really understood why, but um, most Protoss Builds call for the same opening of uh, gateway, gas, core, gas, and uh, that's just kind of the way they do it. Um, anything else is is generally not going to be uh, as uh, fruitful in terms of the uh, tech and and the units that it allows you to get. You really are forced as a Protoss player to open with this style of build, unless you want to go for a gasless style of. Uh, Forge expand, it's also common to throw down a pylon and a forge on the low ground and fast expand. Um, not so much against Terran players, though uh, sometimes if uh, a Protoss player will scout a Terran player going for that early uh, no gas expand style, then they will throw down. But even in that scenario, it's much more common to see uh, at least two gateways before throwing down that nexus, even if they don't go for that gas. One Zealot now moving across the field for Liquid Tyler. Looks like he's researching that warp gate and uh, getting a sentry this time. This is a little bit of a deviation from what we saw in Game 1. In Game 1, we saw uh, Tyler go for that early stalker so that he could start dealing some uh, early pressure and getting some early scouting information. But it looks like he's going to be going for a sentry. This, to me, suggests that uh, he's going to be either throwing up more gateways or throwing up his nexus. It's pretty common if you're a Protoss player, if you want to expand and uh, eventually you're going to go for that gateway army, you want to start getting a lot of uh, early sentries and this will allow you to have the minerals that you need to either throw down more uh, barracks or throw down, or sorry, more uh, gateways rather, or uh, an expansion here at that natural. In the, uh, the base of Ensnare, we have a couple of barracks that are down now, and uh, wow, interestingly enough, he's going for an early concussive shell. Um, this is kind of a nice touch here by, um, by OGS Ensnare, because if you think about it, um, early on in the game you don't have medevacs, so you, anytime you stim, you are punishing your own army, and your own army are losing forces, um, but, uh, and you don't have as many forces, so you're not... You're not getting as big of a benefit from the stim as if you have um, if you have a, a large uh, number of forces with medevac support. So by going for this early uh, concussive shell, it allows you to pick off those early stalker scouts. It allows you to pick off a lot of those early units uh, that might come to your base to try to scout. It allows you to kite very early on, and uh, it it's just overall it's a quicker upgrade. It finishes faster. So um, I kind of like that style of play by OGS and Snare. It's kind of a nice little move. Looks like uh, Ensnare is going to be moving out with his forces to try to put on some early pressure while he expands. Very common strategy in those real-time strategy games to uh, go for this aggression, followed by uh, 
by an expansion, by a, an economic style of play. This, this, this means that you are pinning your opponent back to your base while you develop a little bit more economy back in your base. So um, always a good move to make in those strategy games. Now, a very quick robo has been uh, brought up for Liquid Tyler, and it looks like he is now sending out an Observer, but it is going to miss all the forces of Ensnare, which are now moving out here. Looks like Tyler was getting ready to expand. He does have the 400 minerals necessary, but no, it looks like he's just going to be uh, forced to not expand and produce some more forces. Warp Gate is up, so it looks like he's going to be producing some more units here, and he probably will be able to repel this attack. Um, but man, this Zealot just getting kited and uh, smacked around like nobody's business. That, uh... Those Marauders, that early Concussive Shell, that is exactly what I was talking about, where that uh, Concussive Shell just allows you to pin units and allows you to punish mistakes very early, and a bunker going down at the bottom of the ramp of Liquid Tyler. So this is going to completely contain Tyler to one base for a short time. Uh, that probe taken out, and Liquid Tyler is not going to be expanding anytime soon. If we check out the Harvester count right now, uh, Liquid Tyler is up a little bit in Harvesters, 29 to 25, but very shortly... Um, and Snare is going to be on two base. Looks like Liquid Tyler is going to now move out and try to see if he can't break this contain early on with this early Immortal. I like this play here by Liquid Tyler. Um, I am a big fan of the early Immortals uh, because I did mention this in Game 1. Immortals are very, very good units in the early game. Uh, in PvP, in PvT, um, those Immortals can steal massive amounts of damage and just really reduce a lot of the damage from those uh, those Marauders, which really kind of serve as the tank unit in early game uh, Terran games in particular. But uh, they also do very well in PvP uh, against Stalkers, so uh, they're a very, very solid early, uh, early game unit. Just deal massive amounts of damage and are able to take quite a beating. For those of you that don't know, the hardened shield of the immortals allows them to reduce any damage that they take no matter how big of a damage it is if you hit that immortal with something that deals a thousand damage it will actually only deal 10 damage to the shields of the immortal and uh, this just allows this means that it's going to be very very effective against very hard hitting units like siege tanks uh, marauders any kind of very high damage units and it, it really just negates the damage of those units. So um, I just really like Immortals early game. Immortals are just ridiculously good early game for what they cost. Late game, they tend to suffer a little bit. Um, they just don't tend to do quite as well in that late game. But uh, I really do enjoy this uh, early Immortal here from Liquid Tyler. Nexus now going down for Liquid Tyler, but uh, Ensnare's been on this natural base for quite a while now. Um, not fully saturated though, so if we check out the Harvester count right now, uh, Tyler is actually up in Worker, so he is more on top of his uh, Worker building right now than uh, Ensnare is. He does also have this Observer in the base of OGS Ensnare, so he's getting a lot of good scouting information. He knows exactly the composition that uh, Ensnare is going for. Uh, I don't know if... Uh, yes, he did manage to scout all the uh, the tech here. He didn't see the starboard going down, but he did see this factory going down. So he knows that uh, there is going to be something coming up. There's going to be a little bit more uh, tech than just that uh, barracks uh, that barracks tech level. And he does have this front ramp scouted. Uh, and Snare has not yet noticed that this observer is there. And uh, now that this observer isn't moving at all, it is pretty unlikely that uh, and Snare will notice it at all. Liquid Tyler right now just content to macro. He does have a double forge up going for this double upgrade style of play. I love upgrades, I have to say. Um, there are a lot of people that neglect uh, their upgrades. They like to just get a large army going at once, but I love those upgrades, I have to say. Um, especially once you get into that mid to late game when you start to have a lot of units. I mean, you're really paying the price of one or two units to improve your entire army. So it's really, really worth it, especially in the mid game, to get those upgrades. Of course, you always want to strike that balance. You don't, if you get those upgrades too early, then uh, you're going to be spending a lot of money on uh, improving a very small army. But uh, with this going into this mid game, mid to late game, um, then this is definitely warranted for Liquid Tyler. These are very nicely timed upgrades. These upgrades are going to be finishing just as the 11 minute mark comes in, which is a pretty good time. That's a, a fairly early time to have both those upgrades up. So I really do like that style of play. Again, ensnare with this uh, early, well-placed factory. I like this uh, factory. If you're not going to use it, you might as well be uh, using it for something. If uh, Rather than just having it sit in your base, place it in a forward position. If you're not sending it to your opponent's base and you don't want to just suicide it in for scouting information, then uh, just put it in a forward position so that you can see any forces coming to your front door and allows you to uh, have a little bit of a buffer there. 
while you uh, macro up some more forces because let's admit it I mean if you see a factory just floating there in midair if you're going to attack someone and you just see a factory floating in midair there for the killing you're gonna kill it right I mean Liquid Tyler's gonna do that right now if he sees that factory he's gonna sit here and spend some time attacking that factory he's not gonna move in quite yet and as I said OGS and Snare is now just pulling back he knows that uh he's just gonna sit there attacking that factory for a little while so he's just gonna pull back defend nicely and uh, he had thrown down this bunker. Um, this is kind of an interesting move for bunker placement here. I guess it's there in case he does want to retreat some of his forces in there, or I don't know if it's there for show. It might just be there to uh, make it look like he has more forces and he's better fortified than he really is by having one Marine in there. Uh, Liquid Hutter is going to be able to see units shooting from this, but uh, will not know that it's only got one Marine. Though now I guess OGS and Snare has made me eat my words and has now loaded it up full of Marines. Uh, Tyler right now going for a, a very heavy gateway style of play. Looks like he is warping in uh, more gateways. Lots of gateways coming in. Looks like he's going for this plus one timing attack. Sending in a few stalkers. These stalkers don't have blink. His zealots do not have charge yet. So uh, he does. while well, he does have those early 1-1 uh, one -one upgrades, he does not have any kind of... Uh, I, I, I don't know what to call them, I guess, the, the char I'll just call it Charger Blink, he doesn't have Charger Blink yet, and he is now moving in, looks like he has thrown down that Guardian Shield, so he is going to be committing to this engagement, and all the 1-1 one -one forces of Liquid Tyler are now moving in, a lot of forces here for OGS and Saren, a lot of very nice force fields going down, blocking mining, also blocking these forces all the way in the back from dealing any damage to these forces all the way back here, so very nice force fields still going down right now for OGS and Snare, and just a lot of forces just falling very, very fast to Liquid Tyler's excellent force field placement here. So Liquid Tyler just doing massive amounts of damage, and holy cow, looks like Liquid Tyler is going to be able to break the front of OGS and Snare. Uh, looks like he's trying to macro up some more Marauders here trying to kite as best as he can. Uh, all the sentries have gone down, so no more force fields are going to be coming up, but this is just so many stalkers, so, so many stalkers, and um, I'm actually going to be uh, impressed here. Yeah, it looks like this is going to be GG for OGS and Snare. He's not going to be able to hold this many forces. Uh, his forces are gone, and there is the GG from OGS and Snare, and guess what, guys? I was wrong. I thought this was the best of three. But no, it turns out that this was just a couple of show matches they played for fun. So, um, yeah, so that's that's the end of the match. I hope you guys liked that. Um, I thought we were going to have a, a nice little best of three here. But no, it was just two games. So we had one win from OGS and Snare and one win from Liquid Tyler. So, um, yeah. That's, that's the end of the series, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed that. I certainly enjoyed casting it. If you guys liked what you saw, please comment. Please subscribe. Tell all your friends about it. I love my viewers. I love my subscribers so much. And, uh, yeah, that's that's pretty much it for me, guys. All I have to say is... Glitch out.